Thank you, Kayla, for letting us borrow them. They got them in yet, like yesterday, out of the rain, and I was walking through here, just minding my own business, and walking through here, and I see the mirrors, and I got right about here, and I went, oh, mirrors, thank you, Lord. And all of a sudden, Spirit just started speaking to me. <laughs> then when next time when we come up here to pray, look in the mirror. Look in the mirror. See us for who we are. We have Bibles this morning. There's gonna be there's gonna be a lot of reading. First one that we've got this morning is in Genesis chapter one. And think people say, I'm waiting on the Lord, I'm waiting on the Lord, I'm waiting on the Lord. Sometimes we gotta quit waiting and we just gotta start doing what he says to do. Yeah. Sometimes we already know our answer, but we're just waiting to see if God will change it. Oh, come on. Mm -hmm. What you're really waiting for, when you already know what the Lord wants you to do, you're waiting to see if he'll change his mind. Sometimes he don't change his mind. Sometimes he says, I didn't give you the answer. Why are you trying to change it? Why are you trying to look for something else? But in Genesis chapter 1, that shouldn't have been very hard to find. I'm going to begin reading in verse 26 of Genesis chapter 1. And God said, let us. Who do you think he was talking to when he said us? He said, let us. Jesus. It wasn't the angels. It was Jesus. And the Father was speaking to the Son. Mm. The authority was speaking to the submission. Because the Father is authority. Son is submission. Son is subject under the Father. But when he said, when God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female, created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and have the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So he said, let us make man in our image. Spiritual image. Now who do you think he was talking about when he said, let us make man in our image? Not just Adam. Not just Eve. Let us make man. Let us make all mankind in our image. And let, us, let them rule. Let them have authority. Let them take care of the fish. Let them have authority over every living thing on the earth. Let them multiply. Let them replenish. God didn't say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make them and then just keep making them and cookie cutting them. And, and, you know, he said, we're going to make them and then they are going to take care of the rest of them. Mm -hmm. Not on our own. I mean, if we're made in the image of God, we're made in the Spirit of God. We're created by the Spirit of God. And therefore, we have the Spirit of God that helps us make the right decision. Helps us multiply. Helps us replenish. See, the Lord put us here to take care of things. And, and, and he, does, he does His work through us. People says, well, God don't need my help. He's capable of doing it all by himself. Well, yeah, God can do it, and, and he can keep speaking, and he can keep doing this, and, and he could actually use you like a puppet and make you do whatever he wants you to do, but he wants you to choose to do what he wants you to do. 
He wants you to make that choice. He said, it's on you. This is this is what I've laid before you. Are you going to do it? See, what, he don't have to take us by the back of the head and lead us and say, now look, this is what I want you to do. This is what I want you to do. We already know because the Spirit of God, the image that we are really created in, the image that lives in us, has already revealed what God wants. Now it's our time to take control, to take, take and do it by the leadership of God. So we're created in the image of God. If we're created, if you're the image of God, and the only way... Well, I'm not going to get there yet. Hold on. I'm jumping way ahead of myself. We need to go to Romans. Well, I'll get back there in a minute. Romans chapter 12. Created in the image of God. When you're in the image of God, let me remind you. The image of God. Anybody who wants to debate this, we can sit down and debate it all day long. I can show you scripture. The image of God. It said and there were three in heaven. The Father, the Word, Son, and the Holy Ghost, or the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. Can't separate it. You've got the Father, you've got the Son, you've got the Holy Spirit. These three are one. So when you're created in the image of God, you're also created in the image of the Son. You're also created in the image of the Holy Spirit. And in fact, God is not a human. He came, he came to earth in, in, in the body of Jesus Christ and became human. God is a spirit. So when God came into the body of Christ and dwelt amongst us as a human, as our living Lord and our living Savior, the spirit of God was in Jesus. And then when Jesus went away, he said, I will send the spirit back to you. So here in Romans chapter 12, I beseech you therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable, perfect will of God. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according to God, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many, are one body in Christ. And every one member, every one members one of another, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. Whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the portion of faith. Or ministry, let us wait on our ministry. Or he that teacheth on teaching. Or he that exhorteth one another Exhorteth he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligently, diligence. He that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without dissimulation. Adore that which is 
evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love in honor, preferring one another. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in, in the hope, patient in tribulation, continually in prayer, distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but what is that word? Condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceit. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, if much it has life in you, live peacefully with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if by an enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirsts, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt weep, reap, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Amen. That's a commandment. That, that, is what, that is what the word is speaking to us. It's telling us to, to change our thinking process. Uh, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So what we need to do is, is stop thinking carnally, stop thinking worldly, stop thinking earthly, and start thinking Christ-like. What would Jesus do? You know that bracelet came out a few years ago, and, and uh, sometimes it had the question mark behind it. It went WWJD question mark, and that meant what would Jesus do? The one without the question mark meant walk with Jesus daily. And if you turn it all around and said DJWW, devil just won't win. Amen. But see, if we, we need to start thinking Christ-minded. Start thinking Christ-like to go. If we're created in the image of God, then we're created in the image of the Son, which is Jesus Christ. We take on His mind. We take on His thinking. The way that we think about things is no longer in effect because God has given us a new thing and the Holy Spirit gives us a new way to look at things and, and, and to think about things and, and, and how to react to certain things. Oh, I tell you, there's some situations sometimes I just feel like saying, God, can you please just give me five minutes? Just let me have five minutes in the flesh because I will take care of some business. God says you can take care of business, but not the way you're thinking. Not the way you want to you don't work evil for evil. You do it with good. You do it with the right way. There's a right way to handle things. Man, I'll tell you, there's some people out there that, that, that we're saying, Lord, I don't know how much longer they're going to have to. There's sometimes that God expects us to step in. And God expects us to think Christ-like. When you see a, a, a situation arise, when you see something taking place, Start thinking Christ-like. Start thinking Christ-minded and step in the way God wants us to and, 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 and be the godly influence. Be the godly image. Be the God. Because you know what? Sometimes you are the only God that anybody sees. You're the only Bible that some people will open up and take a look at. And it said with love and, 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 and encouragement and lift one another up and, and uh, to edify one another and, and to work in your prophecy, to work in your ministry. But do it all in the way that the Lord would have you to do it. I've been in churches before where I've seen a preacher that he would know somebody in the congregation and what they were doing wrong and automatically what he would do is he basically would get right up on them, Rhonda. He'd get right up on them and just 
you know, rip them from top to bottom and, and bring everything out. And, and I've seen people get up and, and they see somebody in the congregation and, and they think, oh, I'm going to go minister to them. And they go and they start grabbing on them. That's not God. That's not the way God wants it done. You don't go grabbing on nobody. You don't go pulling nobody out of their pew. Now you can talk to them, you can love them, and you can minister to them, but let God grab a hold of them. Let God pull them out of the pew. If the Holy Ghost can't bring them up front, there ain't nothing that you can do that's going to bring them up front. And if they do come up front, it's because you done embarrassed them and they just want you to leave them alone. I heard a boy one time in church, he came up and he had prayer, and I looked at him afterwards and I said, how do you feel now? And he said, well, as long as my sister leaves me alone now, I'm okay. I said, you didn't do this for yourself? He said, no, I did it because my sister aggravated me to death. He didn't do no good. No. He didn't have a renewing of his mind. He didn't have a change in his thinking. Everything was still the same because it was done the wrong way. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. My other reading spot. Read a while ago about the gifts, prophecy, ministry, love. We got to exhort one another, lift one another up in love. You see somebody that's beaten down. We, as children of God, are supposed to reach down and try to help them. Because you know what? You're the only Bible they've got right now. Some people may not know how to pray. Some people may not know what it's like to pray. There's been some people that's been uh, they they over over time their their mind they lose their mind or, or they they may get dementia or an Alzheimer's and stuff and and you have to kind of overlook things that they say and things they do because they're not really in their right mind they don't they don't know what they're doing and those are the ones that we need to be able to pray for elderly people that sometimes when you see an elderly person that. They can't get around very well. And, and you know, I, I said a uh, couple of messages ago about the widow woman, the, the older lady that was asking her church if any of the men of the church could come and build her a wheelchair ramp at her front door so she would be able to get in and out of her house. And not one single man in that church went and built her a wheelchair ramp. And they're supposed to be the godly influence. They're supposed to be the ones that show Jesus to the world. And they didn't have time to go build her a wheelchair ramp. Some of them could have got together on a Saturday. I know they all didn't work on a Saturday. Some of them could have got together and went and built her a wheelchair ramp. No, nobody did. You know who showed her love? You know who showed her godliness? Brothers of the will. And they're not even a Christian biker group. Anybody that knows them and anybody that's been around them, they're not a Christian biker group. But they showed that with a woman more love than what the church did. Than what the body of Christ showed her. So where's the problem? Where, where, where are we going wrong? They went, they went and built her a wheelchair ramp. I thank God. That somebody was willing to go to, and that, that's what we need to do. We need to be able to edify one another. And what I mean by edifying is, is to build them up. We exhort them. We raise them up. We build them up. When they're feeling love, we edify. When they're depressed, we edify. We help them. Because there's some people that don't know how to pray for themselves. There's some people that don't know what to do. There's some people that don't know where to turn. We do it for them. No matter who it is, we've got to help them because we're the body of Christ. We're the ones that they're going to see Jesus in. 12.1, 1 Corinthians 12.1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. You know that ye were Gentiles carried away into these dumb idols 
even as ye were led. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God called Jesus a curse, and that no man say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same. God which worketh all in all, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another our interpretation of tongues. See, to those who say tongues is irrelevant today, the Bible says that there is some that we still will have that gift. And I want to tell you something about all the gifts since we are the body of Christ. You don't have to say, well, if God would want me to do it, he's already given the gift. The gift is there. It's up to us. Are we going to unwrap it or are we going to leave it under the tree? Are we going to put it in, in the closet somewhere? Mm -hmm. Actually, I knew a preacher friend of mine that had a Christmas gift one year, and he opened up everything but that one gift, and he took it and he put it over in the closet. Everybody likes getting gifts. And every once in a while, when, when the devil would start aggravating him, would start poking at him, that's all right, devil, you keep picking on me. I'm going to go over there to that closet, and I'm going to get my gift out, and I'm going to open it, and I'm going to be happy. But he kept it aside just for that purpose. He's also the preacher that one time that he, he told his wife, he said, Honey, don't worry about anything because the Lord's going to take care of all of our needs. He's going to supply our needs. He said, I serve a God that owns the cattle on a thousand hills. And they had a hard time. They were going through times. And Brother Tommy, he was out of work at the time. And, and they didn't have a lot coming in. And, and one day his wife was standing in the kitchen. And she looked out the window. She said, Tommy, hey, Tommy, go get your gun. God done sent us one of those cows that he owns. One of the neighbor's cows up the road got loose and was in their yard. And she said, Tommy, God done sent us that cow. There's some funny stories about Tommy and his wife. They, they were older people, and he said, Honey, we can't shoot that cattle. Now, her father owns a thousand goats, owns the kid, cattle on a thousand hills, but he didn't send that here. That's the neighbor's cow. If she had her way about it, they would have done half hamburger that night. <laughs> but the gifts, all the gifts is theirs. It's up for us to open them. But, and love. But all things worketh that one and the self same spirit divided to every man separately as he will. For as one body is one and have many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. For one for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jew or Gentile, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit, for the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing? If the whole body were hearing, where would be the smelling? But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it had pleased him. And if they were all one member, whether it were the body, but now are they many members, yet one body. 
And if you look at that, that all of our body is made up of uh, everything on our body makes our whole body, our fingers and our hand and everything is made up and, and our little toes and our big toes and, and all of us is part of the same body. And you can't say that one member of the body is more important or any less than anything else because I'm telling you what, you get up in the middle of the night and you're trying to walk through the room and you're trying to walk into the hallway and you're trying to make it to the bathroom and you bump into something and you stub that little that little tiny pinky toe that very little small toe that don't mean nothing you let, you let yourself stub that and see if you don't feel it see if you don't know that there's pain shooting through your foot see if you don't know your mind is connected to that very little tiny toe Jesus Christ is the whole head he's the mind of the body he's the one that he's the one that controls our senses and, and when one little toe when one little toe is tough the mind knows it your whole body feels it and us as a body there's not supposed to be a division in the body of Christ and we're made up in the image of God we, we make up one body and, I, and, 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 and it goes on there it says no division in the body in other words this part of the body cannot get along I mean you, you can't get by with not getting along with this part of the body you all got to work together the whole thing you know, a lot of people say, I don't really need my thumb. Try picking up stuff with just your fingers and not using your thumb. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. You got to have it all. Yeah. Right. You see, it's like making up the whole ministry. You got the prophecy, the, uh, apostle, pastor, teachers, deacon. Uh, or, or no, this would be the prophet. Because the prophet can come in contact with the pastor. The prophet can come in contact with the teacher. Oh, prophet can come in contact with the apostle and anybody in the body. You got to be able to make the rest of them can't do that. So you got to have all of, all of your members and all of your gifts, all of the callings. Every one of our callings makes up the whole body of Christ. And then we've got this thing called division, or I mean denomination. Mm -hmm. I said it right the first time, didn't I? Yes, you did. We got this thing called denomination that separates the body. Separates the image that we're created in. If we could get over what our organization is. Oh, I'm the member of the first church. <laughs> We can get past that. Man, it, it aggravates me every time when I get around my uncle. He don't live so much anymore. He used to. What church you go to? Where, where are you preaching at? What Bible do you preach out of? I preach out of the Holy Bible. But it's the King James Version. Some of you may have a disagreement with me on this, but I'm going to tell you something. King James Version is good. It's not the only one that's accurate. Amplified, you can read an Amplified Bible right along with the King James Bible, and it says the exact same thing. Oh, yeah. The new King James Version takes out all the these and vowels and puts it in plain English, and you can understand it. Now I'm going to tell you this, NIV cuts out a lot of verses, so yeah, if you want to stay away from any of them, stay away from that one. But the Living Bible, the English Standard American Bible, it all lines up with King James. In fact, King James was not the original English written Bible. There was two or three before that. Now, do I study? I study and I teach and I preach out of the King James Version because most places where I've ever been, they have a King James Version Bible. So, yeah, I stand by the King James. But what I'm saying is, if you can read, and, and don't, don't mess with the NIV, I'm serious about that. They do leave out a lot of verses. Mm -hmm. If you can read a Bible and get better understanding out of it, 
I see if we read a Bible that says, you shall not. And then you say, well, thou shall not. See, when you say, well, they're not supposed to do that. They weren't supposed to do that. No, it's not they or thou no more. It's us. You can read the Bible and it puts you in there personally. And you can get that word out more personally. And you can understand it better than who is anybody to downgrade that word. Who's anybody to downgrade that power? And these old, I shouldn't say old timers, but these people from a long time, they've always said, oh, it's got to be a King James Version. Well, I don't understand King James Version. What if God can't speak to me through King James Version? And there's a lot of it, in, and I'm not down in King James, I'm just saying, we, 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 we make that more higher than anything else. We put that above, just like people do altars or, or sanctuaries and, and, and everything like that. And, but we, we make things more higher than God. Mm -hmm. 